Hi there, this is Will Patillo, and in this video I'm going to be showing how to create any of the basic logic gates uh, using artificial neurons. So I'll start by uh, selecting this neuron here, and I just set a weight to negative 1 and a bias of positive 1. And I'll see as I alternate whether this, this is on or off, this does the opposite. So when this is off, this is on. When this is on, this is off. Um, very simple, just a not gate. Uh, next, to create a uh, OR gate, I'll need to bring in this other input over here. So I'll just uh, connect that. This, I will set both of the weights to positive 1 and the bias to a uh, slightly negative. And uh, now, this, the output should be on when either or both of these inputs are on. And we see that it is. And to make it clear why, we can just uh, analyze what's happening in this node the whole time. Uh, so right now, when it's receiving zeros for both, uh, both of those zeros get multiplied by 1, which is still 0 inside the cell. Um, bias is negative, uh, so that output's a negative, and then the activation function uh, changes anything less than 0 or 0 uh, into 0. Uh, it has to be positive to output a 1. So uh, that's how we get our OR gate. <coughs> a NOR gate is uh, exactly the opposite. I just pull these weights both down to negative 1 and make my bias slightly positive. So now uh, as one input goes in, we have a negative 1 in the cell, output a 0. Same thing if we uh, send an input from the other one. Uh, but if and if they're both, then the cell's negative 2, so it's definitely outputting a 0. But when they're off, the cell is 0, the bias pulls it positive, and the activation function pulls that to a 1, so we're getting a 1 in the final output. Uh, next, getting just a little bit more complicated, we'll go to an AND gate. We don't really need any new cells, we just need to mess with these values a bit. So if I take these weights and make them just a little bit below uh, 0.5, like there, so 0.449, that should work and take my bias to uh, negative and a higher magnitude than, than either of them, uh, then we'll hope is to get this is only on when both of these inputs are on. So if we uh, see here, uh, both off is off, good. One off, other one still off, both together, and it's on. Now let's look inside the neuron to see uh, once again as to why. So if these are both inputs are zero, you know we're getting a zero. Uh, when just one of them is on, then we'll see that the cell is at 0.45, which is less than the bias. So the output's going to be negative. Activation function pulls it to zero. We have a zero there. Uh, same thing if we work with the other cell. Again, it's 0.45, which is less than the bias. But when both of the inputs are on, we our cell is at 0.9 which is greater than the bias, so it uh, outputs something uh, greater than zero. Activation function pulls that to a one, and we have a one in the output. Uh, NAND gate, so that's a not AND. Uh, once again, very simple, just is the opposite of an AND gate. So I just take the bias to slightly more than 0.5, and the weights to slightly less. Uh, what we have here is the opposite of an, of an AND, where it is only off when both inputs are on. Any other condition, the output is on. And we can see what's going on in the cell uh, through each combination. So 0, 0, we have a 0 here. The bias pulls it positive. Uh, when one of the inputs is on, the cell is negative, but the bias overrides that same when it's the other one, and again, it doesn't matter that these weights aren't exactly the same, um, it's just as long as it's less than the bias, so there's lots of wiggle room here. Uh, same for all of these uh, uh, conditions. Uh, but then when both of them are on, we have our cell as negative 0.9, which is more negative than the bias is positive, so which has an end result uh, which is negative and sends a zero out. The XOR gate. 
Um, so I'm just going to move this cell over here. I'll need a few more cells to create an XOR. Uh, take this one and branch it out. Bring this over here. Then I'll create another connection uh, this way. So we have a, this kind of cross connection going on. Uh, branch out an, yet another cell like this. And uh, let's see, I'll need to disconnect this one and connect it over here. And then connect these two cells. So uh, this is our structure. For these cells, I just need to make this one into an OR, this one into a NAND, and this one into an AND. So I'll make this uh, OR gate right now. Uh, uh, that means, as before, both of these weights are 1, and the bias is slightly negative. Should be good. Uh, then this gate, I want this to be a NAND. Uh, so that means uh, negatives around there and a bias of greater magnitude in the positive direction. And then lastly, make this an AND gate. Uh, so that means these roughly 0.4 or so, or slightly less than 0.5, and then a bias negative. Uh, that should be good. So now the goal with an XOR gate is the output is on when one or the other of the inputs is on, but not both and also not neither. So we'll run through these to see if it works and I we'll can analyze what's going on in each cell. Uh, so when one of these inputs is on, output is on, that's good. Other input, output is on, that's good. If both are active, output is off. Neither are active, output is off. Uh, so that is a successful XOR right here. And I can step through uh, each of these uh, to see what's happening in each shell uh, to see why it's getting this result. And I'm not going to talk through each of these calculations. We'll just click through them slowly. So uh, starting with the end, uh, we can see what's happening. Now, if I look at this cell, what's feeding into this? This is what we have. And lastly, this cell. All right, and so that is our XOR gate. Uh, finally, just for completeness, I'll create uh, XNOR gate. Uh, that's very simple. Just, just uh, make this last AND gate into a NAND gate. So I have this a uh, positive over 0.5 and then a negative under. And let's see, so an XNOR gate uh, should be active when both of the inputs are off or when both of the inputs are on and inactive when it's one or the other. So in this case it's off, this case it's off, both together it's on. Uh, and then both off, it's on. Once again, this is a this is a uh, how a XNOR is built. So the value of using uh, these cells rather than just logic gates, because um, you know if we're building logic gates, it'd be easier to just use those directly. Uh, the value of cells is that they're just much much more flexible. Uh, you can just have one type and change values on it to simulate anything else, and that means by changing what these values are, you can change the behavior of the network. Uh, and so then if we combine that with a way of uh, automating the process of changing these values, uh, say based on a feedback signal, uh, that is the basis of how uh, modern machine learning works. And hopefully in a future video I'll be able to implement some of that uh, feedback and automatic adjusting uh, so we can uh, get some, turn this example into an actual use case for machine learning.